TOEFL Strategies, Track 20. Listen to part of a lecture in a teacher training class. Although the use of simplified texts in teaching, especially in EFL, that is, English as a foreign language, has increased dramatically over the past decade, and the publishing industry is bursting with simplified texts of every kind, heated debate continues about the ethics of diluting classic works of literature. There are those who argue that great literature is great because of the words, phrases, and structures chosen by the author. Therefore, they say, it's a crime to change those words, phrases, and structures in any way. By doing so, the very essence is removed, and thus the work of art becomes entirely devalued. Well... This debate brings up good questions regarding the definition of great literature. What makes a novel great? What makes it a classic? Is it the plot, the characters, the descriptions, the dialogues, the prose itself? Or does greatness lie in some kind of originality? Does a work need to break barriers to be considered art? Or is it just a question of popularity? I don't believe there's a simple answer. In fact, I think... Well, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. The question for us is, do we use simplified classics in teaching? In my opinion, the educational advantages of using simplified graded readers far outweigh the philosophical concerns about art. I believe great literature is great because of a combination of things. Characters and plot can be crucial. For me, it is these elements that take my imagination beyond the mundane, outside of ordinary life. Have you ever been asked if you were going to be stranded on a desert island and could take only three books, which three would you take? I'll tell you one title that would be on my list. David Copperfield. There's a book that makes me laugh out loud, moves me to tears, and never fails to absorb me completely. The young hero experiences death and hardships, meets amazing characters, and survives everything thrown his way. It is the events, the characters, the story that make this book so rich. Those can be very effectively conveyed in a simplified text. Another example is Pocahontas. Unlike the character David Copperfield, who is 100% fictional, we know that Pocahontas was a real person. However, as is the case with many legendary figures, no one can be certain that all the stories written about her are completely true. She did indeed marry John Rolfe in 1614 and traveled with him to London in 1616. Regardless of any potential embellishments, This is a memorable story of Native American culture and the impact white settlers had when landing on the new continent. Because of the characters and the way their interactions are portrayed, it is not only interesting historical insight, it's a page-turner. A good example of a nonfiction classic is Benjamin Franklin's autobiography. So much can be learned about the way the world worked in the late 1700s from this absorbing and intimately written book, even though it centers on just one person's life. Now, Benjamin Franklin used grammar, vocabulary, and especially punctuation that would baffle even the most accomplished modern-day reader. Any version of his autobiography that is published today has been simplified to a certain extent, Why not simplify it far enough to enable EFL learners to access it? I could go on. But aside from the fact that reading offers escape, entertainment, and windows on unfamiliar or bygone worlds, there are many reasons why, from a pedagogical, that is, from a teaching point of view, to encourage reading anything at all. Stephen Krashen demonstrated way back that extensive reading improves all aspects of language learning. This includes vocabulary, speaking skills, fluency, and writing skills. In other words, learners who read in English learn more English more quickly than people who don't read. And the more you read, the better you get at reading. 
the better you are at reading, the more you enjoy it. The more you enjoy it, the more you read. Get my drift? On to the next point. Extensive reading is the opposite of intensive reading. Okay, but what does that mean? Extensive reading means not reading for detail and thus not needing to understand every single word. Competent readers are fast readers. Stopping to use a dictionary all the time slows you down. Okay, that's all very well, but if you don't understand any of what you are reading, it won't be a very positive experience. So, how do we encourage extensive reading among English language learners? Provide stimulating materials at a level that is accessible. Many of the classics are great stories. Great stories are stimulating. So, if simplified classics work for your learners, then for goodness sakes, use them. Don't let the purists put you off. Now get ready to answer the questions.